I got to tell you, like every single time I see uh, the word ricotta at a gelato it's place. Ricotta. Like, it's ricotta, Mike. Ricotta. 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 Bravo. Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Welcome back to Kong Hez, the coolest Swedish show on the internet. And I gotta be honest with you guys, as much as I love eating ice cream here from the comforts of my own home, I'm going a little stir crazy. So as things are starting to open up today, I wanna go out for a little socially distanced ice cream adventure. I've been having ice cream and pints delivered here all summer long, so I really wanna go out and talk to these makers, these ice cream creators, the people responsible for keeping my freezer stocked all summer long. And later on, this is really exciting. I've arranged a little international ice cream adventure with one of my favorite food personalities. So, you guys ready? Let's go. What's up guys, today I am in front of Snokomi Ice Cream. This is the place where Barry and Shawnez Bettinger has been cranking out some of the best pints in Washington State since 1997. Really excited today because I get to go check out the factory, see how the ice cream is made, and maybe we'll grab a scoop or two, or three. Let's go. How much ice cream do you produce a day? Well, we do it in, in mix, okay. amount of mix, because the amount of ice cream you get depends on the overrun, yeah. how much air you put in it. So typically on a day, we do 1,500 gallons of mix. 1,500 gallons, gallons of, mix. of mix. Yeah. Okay. That's a lot of ice cream. Then we sell, we sell a lot of mix, and then we also make a lot of pints, and we sell quite a bit of uh, tubs. How many flavors do you have? Oh, in grocery store, almost 30, but wow. altogether, easily a two or 300. We're one of the few companies that do like everything. We uh -huh. buy milk and cream, we make the mix, we, we do the pints, we can do tubs, we do the single serves. Our process is, is very different than how most ice cream is made, and I can show you that. Yeah, let's go, let's go check it out. So, so this is the popsicle machine. Yeah, yeah, so the way it works is they're all wrapped individually and then it goes into a retail tap. Wow, the magical of an ice cream bar right here. That's an incredible looking machine. So 2,500 ice cream bars an, an hour. hour. Woo. So the way we make ice cream, we do it in 300 gallon batches and it's pasteurized at a lower temperature for a, at a longer, longer time. Uh -huh. So most ice cream mix is pasteurized at about 188 degrees for 22 seconds. We pasteurize at about 160, 165 for 30 minutes. By doing it in small batches, we can, if like say there's any spices added, the spices get, get cooked in with the mix. So it's more flavorful. Very. And we can cut the sugar by a little bit too because we're caramelizing the lactose. Really? Yeah. So your ice cream in general is healthier and tastier? Well, if it's healthier, maybe by this much. <laughs> hey, a little bit helps. Yeah. That's a huge operation. I mean, it's not a lot of space. Oh yeah. But you're cranking out a lot of stuff. Oh yeah. I'm at the scoop shop right now, and since uh, Barry said there's only 12 flavors, so I'll just take that. What else do you recommend? Uh, do you like root beer floats? Barry just asked me if I like root beer floats. I gotta tell you, it's one of my utmost favorite things in the world. Oh, yeah. Asking me if I love root beer floats, asking me if I love life. So Shanez is giving me a bunch of flavors of ice cream. It's hot today too, so this is perfect. All right, so the four flavors I'm trying, vanilla, s'mores, chocolate, and lavender. And seriously, the hottest day of the year in Washington. Vanilla. You can 100% taste the freshness of the milk. There's just something almost like silken and velvety. The s'mores, I love. It's like I'm at a campsite right now. Lavender. That's my favorite. You taste it, but then after about five seconds, your sense is being bombarded with this great aroma. It's literally like you're eating an ice cream 
and you're walking through a lavender field. Ah, incredible. What a fun day. Getting to meet such a lovely couple, getting to tour an ice cream factory for the first time in my life, chowing down some delicious ice cream, being transported to campfires and lavender fields. Some days you just love your job and definitely one of those days for me. It felt so good to get out of the apartment and try some local ice cream shots, but I'll be honest with you guys, I miss traveling. I'm sure everybody out there does as well. Right now, I'm actually supposed to have been in Italy. Ever since I left last time, I just can't stop thinking about the pizzas, Florentine steaks, the best sandwich in the world, the gelato. And when you're in Italy, you always gotta get a gelato, okay? Never a gelato. Always a gelato. So I figure I try to go for a little Italian getaway right here from the comforts of my own home and I can't think of anyone better suited to join me on this incredible journey than Food Network legend, Italian American icon, Giada De Laurentiis. Hey Giada, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me, this is so much fun. Can I just say, this is like a bucket list item crossed off my, my <laughs> list of life right now. Obviously, you know a lot about Italian food, you know a lot about gelato, so I gotta ask you, for those who don't know the difference between ice cream and gelato, what is the biggest difference? The great thing about gelato is it's creamier, it's silkier, it's smoother than ice cream. Now, they're both made with cream, milk, sugar, but gelato uses mostly milk and very, very little cream, sometimes no cream at all. They also um, whip a lot more air into ice cream than they do gelato. So again, gelato tends to be denser. You don't eat quite as much of it because every bite just has so much flavor. And then the last difference I'd say that really makes a difference in the flavor profile in the end is the temperature difference. So you serve gelato about 10 degrees warmer. And so the flavor profile of whatever the flavor of gelato is, really hits you because it's warmer. Well, I'm really excited because uh, we're about to taste gelato from shops that you really like in the US. I gotta ask you though, do you feel like um, we can do gelato justice here? Are there really authentic good places for gelato in the US? It'll taste a tiny bit different, but I think they can do a really good job here in the US of giving us as authentic as possible gelato. And I think it comes really close. I know you said uh, we're only supposed to eat a little bit, but we have a lot. So you ready to start eating? Let's do it. First off, we have this. This is one of your favorite places, Dolcezza? You're doing the z, but it's actually Dolcezza. It's very soft. Dolcezza. <laughs> okay. Dope. I feel like Homer Simpson. <laughs> Dope. Peanut butter stracciatella. It sounds very romantic. Okay, I have straight stracciatella. So you're gonna do the peanut butter one and I'm gonna do the straight stracciatella. Stracciatella just means vanilla and chocolate. Stracci or rags, right? So it's like something that's made dirty. Like it's all white <laughs> vanilla and then it has speckles of chocolate, but that's kind of the wording of it. It's speckled with stuff. What do you taste? That's like a cool, sweet, milky, silky blinking over my tongue. <laughs> I like that. That's nice. I like that a lot. It's smooth and it's dense. It's not too sweet and you can really taste the chocolate and the milk together. It's not so sugary, you know what I mean? And I do feel like it's so much more luxurious. I feel like after a couple bites, I'm turning into like a gelato snob now. I'm like, oh, don't give me any more ice cream. Like. Gelato from yeah, the well, that's what that's what I'm hoping is gonna happen by the time we're done. You're never gonna touch ice cream again. You're only gonna ask for gelato. I'm not gonna be able to stop myself and keep eating. So, you ready for the next one? Yes, let's do it before I finish this. So, the second gelato, Giada, you got yours from where? I got mine from the Gelato Festival. Okay, hang on a second. There's a gelato <laughs> it's a, festival? Yeah, it's, it's a store and they make a lot of great gelati. For a moment, I had the biggest uh, fear of missing out because I'm like, there's a gelato festival? Where? I want to be a part <laughs> of that. Know. What do you have? I think we both have chocolate hazelnut and I got mine from uh, Bottega Italiana here in Seattle. I mean, it ain't no gelato festival, but we'll see how it is. So this is very Italian and traditional that they put the chocolate hazelnut on top. Underneath, it's just vanilla. 
And I know the blending of chocolate and hazelnut is like a really popular flavor in Italy. Um, there's, there's, there's a name for it. It's called uh, Gian, Gianduja? Gianduja, bravo, yes. Oh, really? That's exactly what it is. Oh my God. You did God. such a good I'm, job, like, you're no getting better. I said that correctly. You did great, Gianduja. How's yours? Because mine is insane. This mm. is addicting. I love the aftertaste of it. It, it gives, gives off like a, like a fragrant flavor, you know, like that great nutty floral flavor. You're right, nutty and just so thick. I mean, there's nothing better. This really kind of brings me back to Italy. Walking around, eating gelato, letting that flavor sit on my tongue, just kind of soaking all that crazy fairy tale atmosphere up. And I could almost do that if I take a bite of this and close my eyes a little bit. And that's what great gelato will do. You close your eyes and it transports you into a memory that you have of a place that you love. I think that's the gift that food has and especially gelato. I don't want to get taken away too far because uh, I, just, I don't want to come back. Uh, you ready for the next one? Yeah, let's do it. So Mike, this is one of my favorites. It's ricotta and fig from Fata mm -hmm. Morgana gelato. Fata Morgana is um, actually a place that I've been to in Tuscany, and we actually made this exact gelato from scratch. No way. I gotta tell you, like every single time I see uh, the word ricotta at a gelato it's place. Ricotta. Like... It's ricotta. It's ricotta, Mike. Ricotta. Recooked cheese. Ricotta. Ricotta. Bravo. I am so excited for these. You ready? Yes, let's do it. Oh, the spoon is going in so smoothly. I got a chunk of fig. Did you find some fig in there? Uh, oh, I got figged. But oh, look, yeah. It even has the texture of ricotta. Oh, no. Every single bite I take, I want to like inadvertently close my eyes, you know, like like what you do when you're kissing someone you love. That is the best analogy. I love that. I mean, this is a flavor that is very Italian. It's not really one that a lot of Americans order, you know, because it's figs and ricotta. It's for someone who's willing to take a bit of a journey and gelato, but I think it's fantastic. Well, this has been incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Yada, for joining me today. Seriously, one of the best experiences of my life, eating gelato with you. Thanks for having me, Mike. It was so much fun. Thank you for all the laughs. Enjoy gelato. All right, guys, thank you all so much for watching Kong Heads. See you next time.